Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with the Spain News Update. We'll have a look at some of the main stories that have caught my attention in the Spanish press over the last couple of days or so. And we'll also take a look at some of the comments that have been left on videos in recent times. Now straight into the news and the first piece of news related to the demonstrations that have been taking place in Madrid over the last couple of months because of the upcoming Catalonian amnesty that the coalition government is organizing with Catalonian independence parties. And as we know, some members of Spanish society are not happy about this. Well, it's been taken to a whole new level recently because a Pedro Sánchez piñata was beaten up at New Year and Spain's socialists are livid. Spain's ruling socialist party, the PSOE, has filed a complaint after an effigy of Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez demonstration in Madrid. The socialists asked the prosecutor's office to identify the perpetrators, saying the doll's lynching could constitute incitement to hatred against Sanchez, Spanish media reported Friday. Sanchez has faced months of outrage after he secured a new term in the top job by offering an amnesty deal to Catalan separatists in exchange for their political support for his government. The right-wing opposition, many in the judiciary and prominent lawyers have spoken out against the pact. So Pedro Sanchez and company not happy that that piñata, an effigy of the Prime Minister Mr. Sanchez, was beaten up outside party headquarters on Ferrat Street in Madrid on New Year's Eve. And so unhappy are the Socialist Party that they have taken the matter to the public prosecutor's office. We'll see how far they get. And here's a picture of the piñata in question, and in my opinion, a pretty good likeness to Pedro Sanchez. Now another piece of news and a new environmental crisis has hit Spanish beaches, this time in the northwest part of Spain in the autonomous community of Galicia. And as we can read here, environmental crisis in Galicia over millions of plastic pellets flooding beaches. Neither the Junta, the Galician regional government, nor the Spanish government are doing anything. The Galician coast has been stained white in recent weeks. Millions of pellets, small white plastic balls have flooded the Rias Baixas, the Muros Noya Estuary and the sand area in Muxia. The first ones were found on the 13th of December on the beach of Espinarido and since then they have not stopped appearing in different parts of Galicia. The last bag was found this Thursday on the island of Aurosa. These plastic pellets come from the ship Turco Now, registered under the IMO number of 9627899 and flying the Liberian flag as confirmed by the government delegation in Galicia to 20 minutes. So bad news for the beaches in Galicia with millions of these tiny plastic pellets washing up there. And as we also saw in that article in the headline, government in action at a regional level and also at a national level. So let's hope somebody pulls their finger out and starts to deal with this issue of these tiny plastic pellets, millions of them. And thanks to Galician resident Pat for pointing this issue out to me. Keeping on the subject of the environment in Spain and the drought issues in the country, as we can read here, managing the perpetual drought, an elephant in the room called agriculture. Drought is no longer a temporary problem in Spain. Experts warn that climate change is turning what until recently was an isolated event, occurring from time to time due to lack of rainfall, into a structural challenge for our country. But no one wants to face the political, social and economic costs of getting to the heart of the matter. The restrictions of recent months in Catalonia and Andalusia are palliative measures in the absence of a national strategy to deal with the new situation. Agriculture is the elephant in the room that very few want to see. So there we go, fairly clear from that article that agriculture, the elephant in the room, as they call it, exacerbating the drought issues in Spain. And given the importance of agriculture to the Spanish economy, a very, very difficult problem to solve. And if you add tourism into the mix, also adding to the drought issues in Spain, you've got a huge problem. Now on to the final piece of news that we'll look at today, and racism has again reared its ugly head in Spain, this time coming after some of the epiphany parades. And as we can read here, anti-racists slam blackface use in Spain's epiphany parades. Anti-racism activists in Spain have called for a ban on the use of blackface seen in many of the country's traditional epiphany celebrations. Rita Boschello, the first black woman in Spain's parliament, said the practice, part of the annual January the 5th parades on the eve of Epiphany that depict the biblical three kings who brought gifts to Jesus, tarnish the memory of enslaved people and disempower black children. In the parades, actors portraying the kings, or Maggie, 
ride past on floats and fling swings, which are eagerly scooped up by children. Early Christian texts describe one of the kings, Balthazar, as African, and Renaissance paintings often depict him as black. So there we go, some anti-racist groups in Spain slamming the use of blackface in these epiphany events. So we'll see if this tradition in Spain changes as a result of these complaints, but these complaints have been around for a few years now and nothing has been done. And having spoken to a few Spaniards on this issue, they see nothing wrong with it still. Now let's have a look at some of the comments that have been left on videos recently. One here from Kev, we are adding two adults and a small dog to Spain's immigrant problem from the 31st of January, but we are doing it the hard way, legally and jumping a bunch of hoops as all need to do coming from a third country. It's quite right that Spain makes us do it. Yeah, Kev, thanks for the comment, and good to see that your move to Spain is getting closer by the day, the 31st of January, as you say in your comment. And you're right, moving to a country like Spain, or any country for that matter, from a third country is not easy. There are lots of hoops, as you put it, to jump through. And it's all part of the complex issue that is immigration. You've got legal immigration, which is what you guys obviously are going through, trying to cross all your T's and dot all the I's, get all the documents before you come, make sure that everything is legal and above board. And then you've got the other side of immigration, the illegal side of immigration, where people, often with less resources than some others, try to enter countries to improve their lives, their quality of lives, without going through the legal requirements. And that's where things become tricky politically and socially in a lot of countries. One here from Paula, all of Europe, especially Spain, is so overrated. Why anyone wants to get there is beyond me. Yeah, Paula, thanks for the comment, and I'm sure that there are lots of people in the community that would agree with your statement that Europe in general, and especially Spain, as you say here, is overrated. But there must be something there, because as we know, millions and millions of people try to enter the European Union every year. So if you know what that thing is, I've got a pretty good idea, but I want to hear your opinion on the matter. Let me know in the comment section below. One here from Karai. The reasons why politicians find it difficult to propose solutions to problems is because delivering bad news will not get you re-elected. To build desal, canals, tunnels, water reuse, and other infrastructure costs money, which means raising taxes or raising water rates to pay for them. Courageous politicians have to be willing to fall on their swords to propose different solutions to voters. For example, most of the politicians who proposed the healthcare improvements in the US were not re-elected. Yeah, Karayv, thanks for the comment, and you're right, voters don't want to hear bad news from politicians, especially when it comes to taxes being increased and rates being increased. However, in Spain it seems to be the opposite, because the current coalition government has done nothing but increase taxes over the last five years. And as we saw after the elections last year, they got into power again. So maybe it's true in some countries, what you mentioned in your comment, but it doesn't seem to be the case in Spain. One here from GAR, someone mentioned a desalination plant. As far as I remember, desalination plants are very expensive to run, so the reason for not using the plant may be fairly clear. Yeah, GAR, thanks for the comment, and this comment related to another comment that we saw the other day about a desalination plant on the Mediterranean coast in Torre Vieja in Spain, and apparently, according to that comment that we saw, that plant cost a lot of money to build, but it's not in use. But that was fake news because I received an email the other day from Bob and Jill, residents of Torre Vieja, and they said that yes, indeed, the desalination plant is working in Torre Vieja, and it's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, in Europe. So again, another reason not to believe everything you read in the comment section on YouTube videos. Always double check the facts. One here from Joe Blogs, judging by all the developers busy building multi-million euro villas and apartments around me, I would have to say there is no property crash imminent. Last time the crash was approaching, one of the same developers stopped all new construction and waited, but this time there is no sign of them stopping. Yeah, Joe, thanks for the comment, and also related to a comment that we saw the other day from somebody who said that the Spanish property market was heading for a crash, a titanic crash, to use their words. But according to Joe, that is not the case. I mentioned the other day that the European Union recently released a report saying that the Spanish property market was 20% overvalued, but I don't think we're heading for a crash like we saw back in 2008, 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, when there was no construction 
activity in Spain at all, and that was a titanic crash. So there might be a price readjustment in the Spanish property market, but I don't think, and also Joe doesn't think, that there's going to be a crash anything like the one that we saw. But we'll keep our fingers crossed anyway. One here from High Flyer. Hi, Stu. Happy New Year. Hopefully the live streams will return soon. I miss them a lot. That said, it looks beautiful where you are. All the best. John. Yeah, John, thanks for the comment and the live streams will commence as soon as I get back to Spain. I don't have the infrastructure here, unfortunately, to put out live streams and also the time difference is a bit of an issue. So yes, live streams will be starting again soon, so stay tuned. One here from RNJ, you escaped the winter stew. Yeah, thanks for the comment, RNJ, and yes, I have escaped the Spanish winter, at least for a few weeks. I will be going back, and I will be heading back into some cold weather, but hopefully spring will come early this year, and I won't have to put up with the Madrid winter for too long. And there's nothing better, in my opinion, than getting away to a sunnier destination during those long winter months in Europe. And the final comment here from Koffer, I get the impression that you've never been to the East Coast of Australia. I've met plenty of Western Australians over the years that couldn't wait to get out of the place. I'm not making this up. Yeah, Koffer, thanks for the comment. And I've met plenty of people from the East Coast of Australia over the years that couldn't wait to get out of that joint also. Because basically, a lot of people are never happy where they are, and they always think that the grass is greener on the other side. And yes, I have been to the east coast of Australia, I've been to Victoria, and I've been to New South Wales. And if I'm gonna be honest with you, Coffer, I wouldn't wanna live there. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. If you have anything to add to the conversation today, anything to give your opinion on, the comment section is the place for you. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego from sunny Australia.